difference the way you have bought them again. Now, so I'm going to start by showing all of us this picture. This is where you are right now, assuming regardless of your age, okay? And this is your current asset. And as your income continues to come in, you want to grow your current asset to be a greater future asset so that you can retire, slow down, or to fund your children's education. That makes sense, right? Now, therefore, income is the most important financial asset. Because as long as you have income, you have a chance. You have no income, then you have no chance. Yeah, but as long as you have income, you have a chance to grow from your current asset to a greater future asset. The minute your income stops, you would have no choice but to make use of your current asset to fund your lifestyle, and it's going to be really hard to achieve your future goals. But what can cause income to stop? Retrenchment can cause income to stop. But we all know that losing a job is a short-term problem. Surely, you would be able to find another job. It may not be exactly the kind of job that you want, you may be getting a little bit lesser salary, but you can get a job. That is a short-term problem. What can really cause your income to stop for a long, long time will be things like death, disability, and a medical crisis. If any of these three things happen, your income will stop for a long, long time or permanently. We are okay, right? Yes? Okay, good. Now, the role of insurance in your financial plan the one and only role of insurance in your financial plan is such that if there is death that happens, you want to make sure that there is income replacement so that your family can be as normal as possible. They can live as normally as possible. If there is a disability, you want to make sure that there is disability income so that your family and yourself can live as normally as possible. And if there is a medical crisis, you can have total medical coverage so that you can receive the best medical care and at the same time, your family can live as normal as possible. The role of insurance in your financial plan is for protection only. There is actually really no other use of insurance except for protection only. Even the word insurance suggests to you that it is for protection only, isn't it? The word insurance comes from insure. Insure means protect. And therefore, insurance was never ever meant for savings. Insurance was never ever meant for investing. Insurance was never ever meant for retirement planning or children's education planning. I know I seems to erase everything that had been said earlier. But I use the past tense, was, because, I mean, if you go back 30, 40 years ago, the only way you can save is by buying an endowment, isn't it? I mean, back in those days, Singapore is not as advanced as we are today. We don't have that many products. I mean, the only way we can really save is by buying a saving plan, a simple endowment, and that's it, and that's perfectly fine. But some 10 years ago, we have advanced. Today, we are the financial market of Asia. We are the biggest wealth management center outside of US. Today, we are there already. We have many other options. There is actually really no need to use insurance for savings and investments. Now, I'm not saying you cannot. I'm saying there is no need to if you don't want. Yeah? Because the role of insurance, if you go down to the basic to keep it very simply, the role of insurance is really for protection only. Got me? I'm not sure whether you got me. The role of insurance is for not enough. The role of insurance is for only, that's correct, yeah? I mean, protection is correct, but not adequate, huh? must be protection only. I mean, that is why insurance was created. It was really to protect your race. Now, so if you understand that, then how can you best protect yourself? How can you buy your insurance in the smartest possible way? What are the key questions you've got to ask? Now, three questions you've got to ask. How long? How much? What time? How long do you need the insurance? How much do you need? And then what type should you buy? Are we okay? So we're going to address one by one. Eh? How long? How much? What type? Let's start with the first one. How long do you really need your insurance protection? Now, the picture is the same. That's where you are. Income comes in, you want to grow your current asset to become a greater future asset. Same thing. Now, if you're going to buy insurance, if you need to buy insurance to protect yourself 
against loss of income due to death meaning to say today if you die sorry for being so blatant no time to say nice words [ah] I don't want to say if you disappear from the picture and all that I'll just go straight to the point okay today if you die somebody is going to miss your income why you laugh I never say don't miss you I'm just saying that somebody is going to miss your income right then you need the protection yes or no ya today if you die nobody is going to miss your income then do you still need protection no need [ah] obviously some of you here you are in a position whereby people they are not going to miss your income you know what I mean ya so let's say you still need you still need okay like me I still need if I die today I still need my income ya or I need my family to have an income then I need to buy insurance to cover that part and that is what we call death cover or death insurance clear if you still need it can I suggest to all of you that you only need this kind of insurance until your plan retirement or when you have no more dependents whichever is later what I mean is if you plan to retire at fifty five but your children is about fifty or rather your children will only be independent of you when you are fifty eight you need your insurance until fifty eight today if you're going to retire at fifty five but you will need or your kids will be independent of you when you are already fifty three then you will need your insurance until about fifty five whichever is later clear so far in short what I'm really saying is you never really need this insurance permanently you only need this insurance temporarily all okay give me a nod if you are so tired answering me because I'll be always asking you but you are tired answering me just nod your head clear so far good now let me illustrate it okay today let's say I am forty I'm actually forty two but let's say I am forty obviously I have not retired yet okay otherwise I would like to come here on a saturday morning to talk to you all I will be sleeping right yeah so I have to come here to earn one thousand dollars per hour to talk to you all I'm just kidding okay there's no, no such thing okay but you got my point okay I'm still here okay now my kids they are young I've got two kids they are fourteen and ten years old my wife she's a homemaker she doesn't work so I'm not retired I'm still working hard hopefully one day I can slow down so I'm here talking to all of you it's freezing cold and I've been asking all of you to respond but only the front people responded the people at the back you simply don't care bo chap then like what the previous speaker said I walk down the stage and then I die heart attack question do I need to make sure that I've got enough insurance so that my wife and my family can live on normally yes or no clear answer is a yes huh? now let me fast forward today I am 55 years old this is my last lecture I'm really retired already all these years I've been saving investing carefully and I've accumulated say eight hundred thousand or a million dollars for example arbitrary number okay or let's say I've accumulated a million dollars and enough for me to retire all of us have different numbers huh? please don't think that I say one million means you must have one million okay I need one million so I have one million already and this is my last lecture in fact yesterday I collected my CPF money at CPF board Robinson Road and after this lecture I'm rushing all the way to Harbourfront take a cruise and I'm going with my wife for a round the world cruise I can't just wait for this lecture to be over but same audience that's the problem they refuse to answer me they don't want to acknowledge me after the lecture I come down I die now my kids all grown up they're all working already independent of me okay and I'm, I'm retired really and I'm going for this round the world cruise question do I still need insurance answer is answer is yes maybe my wife wants it but does she need it or not no one why because now my, my, my wife probably will get a call from the police officer and say Mr. Stan I have to tell you that your husband died while lecturing a group of people that come from money money sense stock they killed him his body is now dying at the mortuary of SGH please go and pick him my wife's immediate reaction will be she'll be filming mad she'll say what he died what to die don't die properly before go tour then die at least go tour come back then die la. because we've been packing for a few days for the round the world cruise you understand and woman not you know woman usually after they pack they don't have to unpack right okay maybe only my wife like you're not like that one but she's filming mad she's filming mad and she says why must he die now so very unhappily 
she will go to the mortuary, she will pick up my body, put up the weight for one day, burn my body, throw the ashes into the sea. Three months later, the lawyer called to the law firm and said, Mrs. Tan, please come in. I have to tell you that your husband actually left behind a million dollars for you. It was actually meant for both your retirement. But unfortunately for him, but fortunately for you, you now have the one million dollars all to yourself. My wife will only be sad if she ever said at all and angry for three months. After that, she'll be jumping for joy because she now can have double standard of the living that I planned for. Isn't it? Are you getting me? I mean, she can still go for the cruise, either on her own or with somebody else, I don't know. I can't care. But you got my point? Beyond that, I don't need it anymore. I know, but some of you here, you have a question. You say, but I plan to retire 55. What if I don't? What if market was bad last three, four years, I undersaved, I lost my job, and I really couldn't retire at 55? Then you plan to retire 55, you buy until 65, can? Your insurance cover you until 65, can not? Or you super kiasu, you buy until 70, can? I mean, by 70, you're not retired. Uh, and you have still dependent, depending on your income. I mean, have, la, but very seldom. La. Yeah, but by 70, 75, you are still not retired then something has really gone wrong in your planning. La. Most of us here, especially all my money, money sense graduates, should retire at 55, correct or not? I mean, that's the whole idea, right, for coming to talks like this, right? I mean, but you, you plan a buffer. You buy a bit longer. You got me? Are you okay so far? My point is that you don't need it permanently. You need it temporarily. Okay? Disability is the same. Eh? When you talk about disability, it, I mean... Total and permanent disability. Definition of total permanent disability means loss of both eyes, loss of both hands, loss of both legs, or alternate. One eye, one hand, one eye, one leg, one hand, one leg. So if you only lose one leg, that is not TPD. If you want to claim for TPD, you must quickly take one pen, poke one eye, then you can. You got me? Yeah, so I mean that kind of disability. That means economic death. Okay, basically, you are not dead, but you cannot earn money anymore. It's the same thing. If today I didn't die, I come down, I actually get a stroke and I can't move anymore. Now, I need to make sure that my wife gets the insurance money because nobody's earning an income, she needs the money to carry on with the family, yeah? But today, if I'm retired, let's say today I'm 60 years old, I retired five years ago, I've been enjoying for the last five years, and then suddenly, I get a stroke. Now, am I worried about income? I'm retired, you know, am I worried about income? Yes or no? Yes or no? I am 60 years old, I got that $1 million or 800000 whatever the amount is, I'm retired, I've been enjoying myself, and then I get stroke, I can't move. Am I worried that at home, no money to eat, yes or no? Yes or no? No, huh? I may be worried about medical, yes, I may be worried about medical, but I'm not worried about at home, no money to eat, you understand? Yeah, because I'm retired, I'm lying down there, I can't move, my wife can carry on, she can engage a helper to take care of me, she can carry on go shopping, parade in front of me with her new dresser and say, too bad, you can't enjoy, I enjoy, lot. I help you. But income is not a problem. Medical, yes, la, it's a problem. La. But we talk about medical separately. I'm talking about income. When you're retired, you have no income problem. Otherwise, you can't be retired. La. Are you all getting me? Yes or no? Come on, give me a louder response. Yes or no? Okay, good. I, of course, I need to help you understand this. La, because if this, we cannot move on, later on, whatever I say doesn't make sense. Now, how about a medical crisis? Now, in a medical crisis, there are two problems. Firstly, loss of income. Two, increased medical expenses. Of course, the medical crisis I'm talking about is not your cough and cold. Uh. It is your serious illnesses such as cancer, heart attack. Because we know that the top four killers in Singapore, number one is cancer. Number two, heart attack. Number three, pneumonia. Number four is stroke. Now, these four diseases constitute two-thirds of the death in Singapore. By the way, do you know how many Singaporeans die every year? There is a quota on top, let me tell you. Is 17,000 deaths in Singapore, about that plus minus. And out of these 17,000 deaths, two out of three every Singaporean will die because of cancer, heart attack, pneumonia, and a stroke. Now, I know all of us wish uh, that one day we sleep, then we open our eyes, and uh, then we see, hey, how come so cloudy? Uh? How come got angels flying around? Am I dead? Uh, we all like that to happen. But unfortunately, statistics in Singapore shows that we are going to suffer this fall before we die. I don't know about you, it's scary for me, you know. Two out of three, you go and count, kena, kena, miss, kena, kena, miss. It's a high percentage. And we are talking about this kind of medical crisis, okay? And in this kind of medical condition, two problems. One, I cannot work anymore. 
my family may suffer and two increase medical bills we all agree yeah so if you're going to buy insurance protection to protect yourself you need to cover these two area la. so if you're going to buy insurance to protect income loss due to a critical illness again can i suggest to you that it is a temporary need today if i get cancer i get leukemia and i need to be warded in the hospital for the next one year or so leukemia is serious you have to go through at least eight dosages of chemotherapy it's a long drawn disease so i'm there for one year or one and a half years i need to make sure that my home has got income yeah and so i need insurance to make sure yeah so that i i can focus on recuperating my family has money but let's say today i'm retired again i retired 55 today i'm 60 years old i've been enjoying for the last five years then i kena leukemia am i worried at home no money no am i worried yes or no no because i still have the retirement money my wife can continue to fund the lifestyle anyway my kids are all independent of me already i'm not worried that at home no income but what am i worried about medical i'm worried about medical therefore this is a temporary need you got me yes or no okay good now how about medical crisis or rather medical expenses if you are buying insurance to pay your medical expenses and it could be hospital bills it could be alternative medicine alternative medicine in short uh, am means traditional chinese malay indian medicine if i mean have to be lah yeah because nowadays we believe in alternative medicine now if you're gonna buy insurance to protect this this is the insurance that you need for as long as possible yeah regardless of your age whether you're 55 65 75 85 when we are down we want the insurance company to be paying the bills not us because if we pay the bill we may not have enough or even if we have enough after paying it and we leave we don't have any more money to leave then we better die you, you got me not are you getting me yeah so this kind of insurance we need it forever and ever and ever and this is probably the only insurance for most of us that we really need to make sure that we have it forever and ever in a nutshell as long as you are buying insurance to protect loss of income let me say that again for those of you who are very tired if you need to sleep let me say this sentence and you carry on okay now as long as you are buying insurance to protect loss of income whether due to death disability or a medical crisis you only need it really temporarily because there will come a time in your life when you no longer earn an income and therefore there is really no need to protect your income loss are we okay the only insurance that you really must make sure that you have it forever is medical expense insurance insurance that will pay your medical bills and if you don't have it today please make sure you have it because regardless of your age regardless of race language or religion you need to make sure that you have it forever and ever clear so far not clear better say not clear because otherwise cannot carry on no question ah? okay ah? good okay now let me move on we have covered how long let's talk about how much how much insurance do you really need now let me just do a simple calculation for us the previous speaker actually have actually shown it to you okay but i'm going to show it here just to recap your memory let's say you are buying income replacement for death and disability let's say that in the event of okay don't say you lah after you pantang you don't like let's say i die today i die okay and i want to make sure that i replace my family income three thousand dollars per month question is replacing or rather is three thousand a month for a family like mine two kids growing up a lot of money yes or no those of you who are parents will know huh? your kids 14 10 growing up my wife not working at all is giving them three thousand dollars a month a lot a lot is it a lot i'm not saying enough not enough la. enough not enough it depends on how you spend it la. but the question is it luxurious or is it a lot yes or no no uh, it's just Okay, you can get through la. yeah but let's say that's all i can afford la. and when i die i want to give them only three thousand dollars a month so that they realize how important i was you understand no? so i only want to give them three thousand dollars per month and for the next 20 years let's say now why 20 years now let's say let's say let's say erase your memory about my children la. let's say today my kids all let's say they are zero years old mean just born just born yeah 
and I want to make sure that if I die today they have three thousand for the next twenty years so that by then my kids are independent assuming that in twenty years time they are independent got me yes or no yes ah yes ah because twenty years is actually a lousy number to use lah but just assume that in twenty years time my kids will be independent of me okay okay let me use your number because I look at your face and you are telling me that what you talking about not clear okay okay balik balik okay. let's say today my children both of them are four years old both four years old in twenty years time they will be twenty four yeah yes or no that means they can work already they can work so my dream my hope ah is that if I die today they can carry on for the next twenty years my wife can carry on my kids can carry on. Then twenty years later, my children can go and work, and they take care of the mother lah. So I must make sure that if I die today, I I die, I must give my family three thousand for twenty years. Clear? So three thousand for twenty years means thirty six thousand a year times twenty means I need seven twenty. The previous speaker stands also uses almost the same example, but but it was for retirement. But you understand the calculation, right? Yes. But we are assuming no inflation lah. That means after I die, I command inflation to stop. So no inflation. So next three years, my family will get thirty-six thousand for twenty for twenty years. So I will need a capital of seven twenty. Clear so far? Good. Okay now, but I need to give my wife some money for emergency because this money is just for daily expenses. Ah, if there is an emergency, that's it. No, she doesn't have extra already, right? So let's say I want to give her hundred thousand for emergency. Not a lot, lah. Hundred thousand divided by twenty years, ah, every year only how much? Five thousand only, not a lot, right? But that's all I can afford, lah. So I'm going to give her hundred thousand for emergency. Plus, I've got children going to school, yeah. My kids, like in this example, I'm using four years old. In about maybe fifteen, twenty years time, let's say, one child education in Singapore, four years degree program will cost about hundred and twenty-five thousand. Do you all know that? What is the cost of university education today for four years? All in all, lah. Tuition fee plus expenses is about seventy thousand, about that. Okay, today. But you know that university education, the inflation rate is about six percent, so it will go up, lah. So let's say in fifteen years time, every child of mine will need hundred and twenty five thousand to study four years degree program here locally in Singapore. They better make it, no. If they don't make it, they go overseas. It's not enough, ah. You got my point. So that means to say that I will need to prepare for two, two hundred and fifty thousand. So even if I die, I wish that I will give them enough money to send them to uni, lah. Yeah. Now if I add that all up, I will need about actually to be exact one point oh seven million. But let's round it off. I will need at least about one million cover. Now of course I'm assuming I've got no current asset, nothing. I'm just telling you that I need one million dollars. I need to give my wife one million dollars capital. She take the one million dollar capital. She keeps seven twenty for daily expenses. She keeps hundred thousand for emergency. She keeps the two hundred fifty for children's education. Clear? Yes. Now let me ask all of you. Is one million dollars quite a bit? Huh? How many of you here you have one million life insurance cover? Put your hands. Okay. See, in front speaker all have one. Must have because MAS screen us. Don't have cannot come and talk. How many of us here we don't have one million dollar cover? Good. Those of you who didn't put up, ah, do you know how much you are covered for? <laughs> but I don't blame you. Many times we buy, we don't, we can't remember, lah. Ah. Yeah. But I'm glad. Those of you who put up your hands, all almost all put up your hands. Ah. Now, why is it that you don't have one million dollars? Do you realize that one million, although sounds like a lot, is actually not a lot because I've broken it down for you. Realize that I'm not aiming for the sky. I just want to give my wife three thousand dollars a month for the next twenty years. In fact, if I really give this amount to my wife, my wife will be so angry she will never visit my grave again. Because it's just three thousand, you know. You understand me? Yeah. I'm just trying to impress upon all of us that actually our cover is a lot. Yes, we can use the ten year as a guide, as a general guide. And we did mention it's a general guide, but if we go down to the specifics and calculate, you will realize that your cover, you actually need quite a bit, isn't it? And many of you here, you are senior, you have retired, your kids are independent of you. You are very blessed because nothing happened. But if something happened ten years ago, fifteen years ago, how would your family 
carry on. It'll be tough, right? Now, but there are many of us here, you are at my age or younger. You have this need. I have this need. If you don't have enough cover, please take time to think about it. If today you are gone, how will your family go? Please take time to, to think about it because we actually really need quite a bit of coverage. In a HSBC survey, they found that 9 out of 10 Singaporeans are undercovered. The average coverage of Singaporeans is about 100,000. That's it. Okay? Now, of course, I know you'll be all staring at me and say, 1 million how to buy. It's not that I don't want. I got no money. <laughs> okay, we talk about the money part later, okay? But I just want to impress upon you that we need quite a bit. Now, disability is the same as death, huh? because disability is like economic death. Huh? Although we are, like I said, although we are alive, but in truth, huh, we are dead. Okay, we are not earning any more money. I want to talk about medical crisis. How much do you really need to buy to protect yourself against a medical crisis? Now, two problems again. One, loss of income. Now, can I suggest to you, and it's a suggestion, you can buy more if you want, yeah, that you should cover yourself for loss of income due to cancer, heart attack and all that. Eh? You should cover yourself the amount at least two to three years of your income. So if you earn 50, buy 150. If you earn 100, buy 300. If you earn 25,000, buy 75,000. About two to three years of your income. Why? Now let's say today I suffer cancer. I can give my wife this sum of money and say you have money for the next three years. Now it is likely for a cancer patient which is the top killer in Singapore. In that three years, I either live or I die. La. Of course, I don't live or die, right? Yeah. But most cancer patients, unfortunately, they don't live past one and a half, two years. Most. If they live, they are in remission. So, But in that three years, while I'm recuperating in a hospital, my wife can take the money and take care of the family for three years. She doesn't have to worry about mortgages not paid. She doesn't have to worry about the tuition that my kids have to go, you know, and all those kind of things. She can focus. I can focus to recuperate at the hospital. Clear so far? Three years later, if I die and I don't make it, then my $1 million, my earlier example, will come in and take care of the kids for the next 20 years. Are we okay? So that's why three years. But like I said, it's a suggestion. I mean, if you want to buy more, up to you. Yeah, because some of you will say, what happened if kidney condition, you know, all that. I'm just giving you a suggestion that you should have about three years because cancer is number one killer. Okay? Now, how about a medical crisis? Or rather, sorry, a me for medical expenses. How much should you buy to cover yourself for medical expenses? Now, in, in Singapore today, when you, buy, when you want to buy a hospitalization plan, it all depends on your healthcare expectation. If you want to stay in a B ward, you buy a plan that gives you B ward benefit. Right? You want to stay in an A ward, you buy a plan that gives you A ward benefit. You want to stay in a private hospital, you buy a plan that gives you private hospital benefits. That's how our hospital plans are structured today. Okay? Can I urge all of you all, can I suggest to all of you all, if you can, please give yourself an option for private hospital cover. Now, why am I saying this? Am I saying this because I think that our restructured hospitals are lousy? Of course not. Our restructured hospitals are world class, correct or not? All our government institutions are world class, correct or not? You want your laugh? This is money sense talk, you know. <laughs> not world class, you wear got this kind of talk. Of course, I'm not suggesting that our restructured hospitals are lousy, but in truth, I mean, jokes aside, you know that our hospital standards are quite high. Of course, I'm not saying that the restructured hospitals are bad. Then why am I suggesting that you should give yourself an option for private hospital? About 15 years ago, my colleague, father-in-law, had a heart attack. That was 15 years ago. We rushed him to SGH. Straight away, rushed him to SGH A&E. But it was a long queue that day. The nurses at A&E told him, you cannot wait here. Okay? Because today, everybody emergency. That's the truth. Huh? Yeah? The waiting time is two hours. Now, a heart attack patient cannot wait two hours. It would be too late already. And therefore, he has no choice but to send the father-in-law straight away to Mount E. The cardiologist came down, checked on him, pushed him to the operating theater, did an angioplasty, the balloon stand. He survived. He stayed at the hospital for 39 days. Total bill, 50000 But that was 15 years ago. Huh? Cheaper. 50000 is quite okay already. And it's a four-bader. 50,000, the father-in-law woke up, realized the bill, he almost died of a second heart attack. He was filming mad, you know. He said, why do you send me? Because the father-in-law was a hawker. I mean, he doesn't earn that much. Why do you send me to Mao Yi? You should send me to Si Pai Po. That's exactly what he said. But he has no choice. 
because if they have waited there he would have died now you will ask me today is it still possible for A&E and restructured to be very crowded of course I just spoke to a group of sing health nurses from national heart center they are the people are there at the A&E they told me the A&E nurses sometimes they don't even take lunch it's just so busy it is possible about five years ago my brother-in-law he was coughing and coughing and he was vomiting blood so he decided to sell what himself to TTSH, Tan Tok Seng Hospital. At TTSH that day, it was a crowded day. He went in at about 11 a.m. that day. We went to visit him at about 5 p.m. He was still there. He has seen the doctor, but no word. It's crowded. My father had a heart attack about two and a half years ago. It was 1.30 p.m. that I sent to Tan Tok Seng Hospital because my father was too old to buy any medical plan when all these plans came up. My father is in his 80s. So I sent him all the way there. I didn't know he had a heart attack. If I knew he had a heart attack, I would have called an ambulance. I didn't know. Yeah, so I brought him, I carried him all the way there. My father is not my size. He is a lot bigger than me. Actually, everybody at home is bigger than me. I'm the smaller size. Huh? So I dragged my father all the way to TTSH a &E. We went there at 1.30. By the time I left the hospital, it was 10.30 p.m. The doctor attended to him, but no what? He stayed at the, this thing called the cold room huh? with all the tubes. They just put a blanket on him, that's it, he was on, uh, in the operating gown and he stayed there shivering until about 9 plus before they got him a ward. I'm not saying that our restructured hospitals are lousy, but it's crowded. Do you want to give yourself and your family an option? We are all talking about option here, you understand me? It's all about option plus. It is, it is a known fact. The best doctors, the famous doctors, where are they? Are they at the restructure or are they at the private? Where are they? They're yeah, the private. The best cancer doctor, Dr. Ang Ping Tiam, he's at Mao Yi. The best gastro surgeon, Dr. Cheng Jun, he's at Mao Yi. The best neurosurgeon, Dr. Kip Go, he's at Raffles Hospital. They are all there. Now, I'm not saying the doctors at the restructure are lousy. I'm just saying that it is an option. Sometimes you just want that option and therefore give yourself an option for private hospital. In fact, some of the Sing Health nurses told me some of the medical procedures may not be available and restructured. They were from nurses, I mean, this come from nurses themselves. Do you want an option? When my son was four years old, you see my son every year, he will go to the hospital for national service without fail, the first five years of his life. 26th of December, we thought everything was fine. He was four years old. Suddenly he had fever. In 30 minutes, the fever shot up to 40 degrees. He had fits. Foam, and then he fainted. I was only a four-year-old father, super worried. I was staying in the east, at the east at that point in time. Where do I send him? I can't send to CGH, you know, because fits is not critical. You won't die because of fits. It's basically seizure. Your brain go on a short circuit, right? Yeah, and you want to wake this fellow up as soon as possible because you don't want him to go into that deep sleep, more dendrites, I mean, more brain cells die. So you want to wake him up, but he, he, he won't die. He's not critical condition. If I send to CGH and it's crowded, he is going to be on the queue. But I had an option, and straight away I sent to Ishaw. The doctor came down, gave him a drip, he woke up within 15 minutes. I had an option, and we are all talking about option here. People, many of you are more senior than me, I'm a lot more junior, and you have got more life experiences. I'm only 42 years old, but unfortunately, there are many people in my lives, my good friends, my family members who have all gone to hospital for serious cases, more than 10. And I know, and I know that when something happened, you have no time to think, you know. You have no time to take out the insurance policy and say, you endure pain? I check which word you entitle, okay? You have no time. I was at NUS giving a talk and there was one of these participants that told me, you know, I don't know about y'all, but restructure hospital is good enough for me. We are saying it rationally, you understand? When we are okay, we can think rationally. But when an emergency happens and you really need an option, you want an option. And I've gone through it many times and I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I have an option. I don't have to consider cause. I just give my loved ones the best treatment. And the best part of it is with today's shield plans, you can actually quite afford it. Are we okay? So please give yourself an option for private hospital. Now there is, I know some of you here are pension people, there's a question coming in about pension, I'll answer that later, okay? Pension people should you buy and all that, we'll talk about that later. Now how about alternative medicine? TCM, TMM, TIM, yeah? Let's say you believe in it, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that it won't work, okay? 
But if you believe in it, you must provide some funds for it, yeah? Now, how much funds should you provide? I would suggest about 50k to 100k. Set aside for alternative medicine. Now, don't ask me what type of insurance to buy yet. Now. We'll talk about it later, okay? I'm talking about the amount now. My mother-in-law died at the age of 54 years old. She was not really my mother-in-law because she died about three months before our wedding. It's not because of me, I assure you. Okay, it's not like, wow, this kind of son-in-law better die. No, 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 not because. My, mother had a re my mother-in-law had a relapse in, of cancer. Now, she went to Glen Eagles. They opened her up. Too late, stage four. Zip her back. Five days later, she got discharged. $17,000 medical bills. Expensive, but manageable. But what happened over the next five months is the family scrambled all over the place to find an alternative cure. They tried everything from royal jelly because stomach cancer is a very painful way to die. Basically, your mucosa, your mucosa membrane or your stomach is spoiled. Everything goes in, comes out, you cannot absorb. Yeah, and my mother-in-law, from 50 over kg, she became 20 kg when she died. Every day, she is in pain. So the family scrambled around to look for an alternative medicine to ease their pain, to hopefully to lengthen her life. They tried everything, it didn't work. She died five months later. Total alternative medicine bill they spent is close to 100k. Now, whether or not they got cheated or they bought things expensive, I mean, I'm not here to judge, but I'm telling you it's an option. And when somebody is down, like our parents, our children, will we go all out to try our best to find a cure? We would. And therefore, it is an option. If you want, make sure you have about 50 to 100,000. About that, good enough. So far, are we okay? How long? How much? Let's talk about what time, okay? So what type of insurance do you need to buy to cover all those needs? Now, I'm going to do that by using a case study, okay? Now, so this is John. He's currently age 30 years old. Plan to achieve retirement or financial independence at the age of 55. That means 25 years from now. He has got two children. And by then, he will be, they will be independent of him. Okay, let's say they'll be independent of him because the two girls, which are twins, they are two years old. So in 25 years' time, they'll be 27. Now, his wife is a homemaker, very much like myself. Now, John is considering if he dies, unfortunately, he passed away today. He says that he has a following requirement. He says he wants to provide the same example just now, 36000 a year for 20 years, emergency fund of 100 k and university funding for both girls at 250 k So far, are we clear the case study? Yes? 30 years old, wants to retire in 25 years' time, homemaker wife, two kids, will be independent, by then, John retire, and these are the requirements. Now, John currently earns an income of about 77000 per year, all in, a bonus, whatever, all in. Not bad for a 30-year-old man. Yeah? Now, he already have an annual expenses of $48,000, which is about how much? About $4,000 a month, everything. Lah. Okay, let's say everything, holiday, whatever, which is no big deal. Yeah? All right, pretty reasonable. This is his current expenses, but now he decides that he has got two twin girls he needs to cover himself. Now, how long does he need the insurance? That's the question I'm going to ask all of you. Does he need it? If he wants to buy insurance covering himself against loss of income due to death, does he need the insurance permanently or temporarily? Which one? Which one? Okay, you got it, huh? Okay, so he only needs it temporarily because there will come a point in time whereby he doesn't need income anymore. Now, how much does he need? Calculation. Okay, let's revise. Now, in terms of Providing an amount for 36000 per year for 20 years. How much does he need? How much? Louder for me, please. 720, very good. Yeah, she needs 720,000, assuming no inflation. Revision, huh? Now, emergency fund, how much? Now, insurance education, how much? 250. You add that all up, you will need 1.07 million. Got me? So he worked it out. He needs about a million cover, but it's a temporary need because there will come a point in time whereby he doesn't need this anymore because he will have no more income to protect. Clear so far? Yes. Okay, good. Now, so what are the options available? Now, so these are some of the options you can consider and we've gone through all of them just now, so I won't spend time talking about what is whole life, what is term, what is ILP. By now, you should be an expert after the first three sessions, right? So let's quickly go into the numbers. Huh? So first, let me tell you, ignore the 5%, 5.75, .5, ignore it first, huh? ignore. This is ILP, whole life term. He needs 1 million, 1 million, 1 million cover. Let's work the ILP one first. Now, if he wants 1 million cover, 
he needs to pay a premium of about fourteen thousand dollars thereabout depending on which company you buy from now I just took this number from one of the insurance company so it could be slightly more slightly less but it's not that so he needs to pay fourteen thousand dollars premium a year and for that fourteen thousand dollars premium per year part of the premium will go and buy the insurance cover of one million for him part of the fourteen thousand dollars premium will be invested into the unit trust that the insurance company manage or they outsource to other managers to manage got me clear so far give me a nod please this is crucial yes or no okay not very convincing eh? the premium of fourteen thousand for the one million cover part of it will go and buy the insurance that he need the other part will go and actually invest into the unit trust that the insurance company has okay good now i'm gonna skip two eh? now if he puts in every year 25 years later, the 14,000, if you grow it at 5%, okay, will be about 450,000. No, sorry, let me say that again. Not the full 14,000, uh, the part, the portion of it that goes and buy the fund. Because there's one portion that buy the insurance, yeah? That one, no return, uh, of course, uh, because the insurance company cannot give you coverage for free. Uh. So part of the 14,000 will go and buy the coverage. That one, no return. That one, throw away one. But there is a portion that you buy the unit trust, right? That if let's say 5%, okay, net of all expenses and all that, it will give you cash values of about 450,000 at age 55. I took it from the insurance company, the quotation, the benefit illustration. Clear so far? Okay. okay. With the ILP, you get insurance plus some investments. It is a permanent cover, really. Because as long as you pay it, you get a cover. Okay. However, it may be not very flexible because if you don't like the fund, if you think that the performance of the fund is bad, or the range of funds, you may not have something that you like, for example. Maybe you want to buy an emerging market fund, for example, but the insurance company doesn't have, you can't buy it. Or if you feel that the expenses are very high and for three years, the fund manager doesn't, doesn't do the job well and it's not performing and you want to get out, you have a problem, right? So that is where I mean, what I mean by inflexibility. Now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't buy. I'm just saying that you have to consider this, this limitation if you want to go into ILP. Now, how about a whole life? Now, for a whole life of 1 million, okay, 18,000, okay, a year, with this 18,000, you get insurance plus savings. Part of this 18,000 will be used to pay for the insurance cost. In the industry, we call mortality charge or insurance charge. Now, that portion that is used to pay the insurance is also thrown away. It's gone. It's not returned to you. Cannot because the insurance company has to charge you. But part of the 18000 will also go and save, right? It will go into the insurance company life fund. That means the insurance company themselves take the money. They will buy equities. They will buy bonds. They will buy properties. They will do that investment for you. It's from the life fund. You got me? And if the life fund plus the profits of the insurance company in total, let's say we project a 5.75% return, you will get about $700,000 after 25 years. Clear so far? Yes or no? Okay, now it's a permanent cover because as long as you pay, it covers you until you conk out. Yeah? Now, however, as we have learned this morning, buying life insurance is a long time, it's a lifelong commitment. If you surrender halfway, you will lose money, you know, for whatever reason, if you want to reduce, you can. You can always make changes, however, it always comes with some cost, la. either coverage or returns. There will always be cost. Got it so far? Now, how about a term plan? Now, for a $1 million term, this for John, 30 years old, and he's not a smoker, it will cost him about $970 a year. But as we have explained, the term has no investment function at all. When you buy the term, you are purely buying the insurance cover. You are paying the insurance company I don't want any investing, I just want to buy the insurance. Strip out the investment. Got it so far? And you take the $970, and so of course, you get just insurance, you get nothing at the end, because there's nothing. Yeah, there's no investing. Okay? It is a temporary cover. You can buy a term to cover you up to any age you want. In fact, in Singapore today, you can buy a term that covers up to 99 years old. Okay? You can buy a term of 65, 70, 75, 80, up to 99 years old, you can, you can, you can buy, no problem. Okay, so it's temporary. You buy based on how much you need. If you think you want to retire at 55, but you kiasu, you want to cover under 60, you buy under 65. Ah. If you super, super kiasu like me, then you buy under 70, although you plan to retire at 55. So you decide. Yeah? 
Now, it's flexible in a way whereby if you feel that your health is still good and there is another plan that's cheaper, you want to change, you change, like buying car insurance. And honestly, I've been changed my term plan for three times already. Okay, I first bought my term plan when I was 35 years old. And then two years later, another insurance company came out with a cheaper product, same product, same cover, cheaper product. I'm older, you understand, I'm older. But the premium is cheaper. So what did I do? Cancel it, la. I move on to the next product. La. I am not worried about losing the cash value because nothing, there's nothing there. Of course, I'm healthy. La. If I'm not healthy, I continue the plan. How many minutes left? 10 minutes. La. 30 minutes left, thanks. <laughs> okay, now, so, um, what was I saying? See, la, he distracted me. What did I say? Oh yeah, I changed plan. Okay, so, so, so. That's the problem with me, I got dementia. Um, yeah, so I was saying that, yeah, I buy at 35. Two years later, there was a new plan that came out. It was cheaper. And so what did I do? I move on to the next plan. And then, another one year later, there was a new insurance company that came out with a cheaper product. What did I do? I changed plan. So, actually, I'm getting older, but my premium is coming down now. But like I said, that I can only do if I'm healthy. If I'm not healthy, I just stick on to the old plan. It is still 970. La. I have no option to be cheaper. You understand? But as long as I'm healthy, I've got an option. I can change the plan if I want to. No problem because it's not tied to any investment. You are just buying pure insurance. Got it so far? Now, so how? Which plan should you choose? You have three options. Now, some of you will say, well, according to what you have presented so far, it does seem like buying term will be better, right? But I don't want to buy something that doesn't give me zero return because here pain. Yes? But I have already explained to you it is the same thing with an ILP and a whole life because there is a portion of insurance that is also not given back to you. The only reason why you have these cash values is because you gave the insurance company the extra bit for them to invest or buy into the life fund. So it's the same. You got me? Okay, good. Then you say, okay, I would want to buy well, the IOP or the whole life is either 14 or 18K, but I cannot afford it. How many of you can afford 14, 18K for one insurance plan? Some of you can, maybe. Okay, but most of us here, we cannot. And then we say, okay, never mind. Since I cannot afford it, I buy lesser. Lah. So maybe I'll buy 200,000 cover. And that's what most of us will do, right? We just buy 100, 200, then we say, pain really. Here pain, here pain. Some more only die, then got money. Okay, or not say only die, got money. Lah. I'm really buying because I want to protect my family, right? So, wow, pain, they cannot pay 14, 18. So you say, I cut to 200,000 cover. What does that mean? That means that you are basically no longer protecting yourself in full. And if you go to the very first slide I told you, what is the purpose of insurance? It is for, you forgot already, is it for? Protection only, thank you. And now you are doing something that defy the spirit of you buying the insurance in the first place, isn't it? You are undercovering yourself. And those of you who attended the investment talk like donkey months ago, you will remember that in order to invest properly, you must have the ability to take risks. Yeah? If your insurance is not done, you have no ability to take risks. You must always build foundation. What is foundation? Insurance. You must cover it. You must make sure your downside risk is all safe. Then you can go and do the rest of the things. Okay, so then you come back and say, okay, never mind, then I know already, I must cover myself fully, so I will go and buy this ILP or whole life, now I can afford, I buy lah. If I cannot afford later, then I cut down, yeah? But I've said already, if you do that, you can do it, but with certain costs involved. So, how? Maybe you'll be thinking, okay, then that's it, I will just want to go and buy term plan. Okay, I want to go and buy term plan. But then, you may be thinking again, I know I only need it temporarily. Hear me out, huh? Hear me out, huh? I only need it temporarily. I know, I know. I only need it under 55, 65. But, if I can provide for them permanently, okay, what? You know what I'm saying, right? Are you all you clear what I'm saying? You may say, yes, I know I need under 65 only, but what's wrong if I buy a plan that will give my family Forever, I mean, for, as long as I live, I have that cover. I don't mind giving them extra, even though I don't need it. Because you can never go wrong when you give your loved ones extra. But you know what? That is only if you only, that is only if you only, that is only if you consider 
insurance from the insurance perspective only? Sometimes we don't realize that our life is not just about insurance. Our life is about many things, isn't it? Do you plan to live or do you plan to die? I mean, when you sit down with a planner or an advisor, do you tell them at the first go, my goal is to plan when I should die? You don't, right? You plan to live. And because you plan to live, you have many other needs. Let me show it to you from the financial planning perspective. Now, you need one million cover for term. Okay? Under term, huh? Okay, sorry, let me say that again. You need one million cover. Let's say you go on the term plan. You buy a term plan, okay? With term. But you have other needs, huh? Okay, sorry. Balik, balik, balik. Say that again, say that again. Erase, erase. Okay? Let's say for John, he needs to retire at 55 with a million dollars. It's not a lot, by the way. Eh? A million dollars will only give you about $3,000 or less in the next 20 years, okay? It's not a lot of money. Eh? So you want to retire with $1 million, or John wants to retire at 55, $1 million, and he got two kids that he needs to send for education, right? At 250000 But he goes and buy a term. He goes and buy a term. He saves nothing, zero cash value. And that means to say now, okay, he has to invest on his own uh, to make sure he reached one million and two hundred fifty thousand. Got me? Okay, now, after taking into consideration his annual expenses of forty eight thousand dollars, his income was seventy seven, his annual expense was forty eight thousand. After taking away the nine hundred and seventy dollars that he bought the term plan, he's left with twenty eight thousand left annually surplus. Now, let's say he invests, he can get 6% return in his investment. Now, why do I use 6%? I didn't use anything less than 5. I mean, if you want to use anything less than 5, you might as well just go and buy the insurance. Okay, I also didn't put 9 because honestly, I'm post 08, 09, it is very difficult to get 9% consistently year after year. We have to understand that. The world has changed after 08, 09. It is very hard to get a 9% return. Gone are those days in the 90s whereby you buy IPO, don't need to think. Q ATM, buy as much as you want. Tomorrow lease, I pay, I, I sell, I make money. Gone are those days, no more already. Today to get six, seven percent is probably reasonable. That's about it. Okay, so that's why I use only six percent. So let's say John saves at six percent per year, he will need seventeen thousand every year to reach one million dollar retirement. Clear? Yes or no? People, are you all okay? Okay, uh, boy, you're getting softer and softer. What I'm saying is, if John says 17000 a year at 6% return a year, he will, he will be able to get $1 million. He needs 16000 saving a year uh, for the next 25 years. He will need to save $9,000 a year at 6% for the next 16 years to reach 250000 for the children. Got it? His surplus is twenty eight. After minus this, after minus this, his annual surplus after all this plan is $2,000 left. Are you getting me? Is that a lot, $2,000 left? Not a lot. Nah. But I hope you see the constraints uh, that your life is not just about buying insurance. No, you have other commitment that you need to plan for. Now, let's go to the next one, the whole life. For the whole life, now, everything is the same, except that for the whole life, there is a cash value of 700000 right? Let's assume that this is his retirement, part of his retirement money. His plan is to cash out, uh, and take this 700000 for retirement at 55, okay? Now, but after paying the premium for the whole life, his net net uh, surplus uh, is 11000 77 minus 48 minus the 18000 premium is 11000 left. Now, if he wants to save the remaining 300000 to reach $1 million, he needs to set aside $5,200 a year at 6%. If he wants to reach 250000 he needs to save $9,000 every year to reach 250000 Can you see not enough money to do it? Yes? Now, for the IOP, it's the same thing, okay? It's also not enough money to do it. What's my point? My point really is, you cannot just buy insurance, insurance alone. There are many, many other areas of your life that you need to consider. Now, there is another option, and I'm not saying that's a good option, eh? because some of us will do this. You buy a whole life of 200000 and then you recover the rest with 800000 Or you buy IOP of 200000 okay, and the term remaining 800000 Now, 
you have if you do that you got some surpluses you have but it's very little but you know what people i have not considered other insurance for the rest of the family i have not considered medical plans for my wife i've not considered the life plan for or the medical plans for my children i have not considered all these things and i'm assuming that the family will be only spending four thousand dollars a month which is not a lot are we all okay here I hope I drive home the point. We, we need to be able to consider other aspects and not just look at life insurance alone. Now let me end with this, okay? Let me end with this. The whole purpose of buying insurance is this. I'm here today. I'm here today, okay? My objective for planning is to reach that. But my fear is while I'm trying to accumulate from here to there, something bad happens to me and my whole plan messed up, yeah? The purpose of insurance is such that along the way, something happens, I can still achieve my plan because insurance is a risk management tool. You get me? But I cannot buy insurance until it becomes an obstacle to get from here to here because I spend so much money on the premiums. If I spend so much money on the premiums, I'm planning to die. Because if I don't die, all my plans fail. Are you getting me or not? Because I'm spending so much on it. Now, I know it's always good to buy insurance for kids when they are young. I know. And I agree that it is cheaper for children. Sorry, I'm walking up and down because I usually I'm very enthusiastic when I'm talking. I know, I know it's good to buy it for them when they're young, one year old, and then at 21 years old, we give it to the children as a head start. And that's what we all parents want to do because we have love for our kids, right? But people, is that a priority? If my son dies today, is he going to affect me financially? Yes or no? No. Yes, it's good to have. It's good that I can buy a whole life plan for him and then when he grows under 21 years old, I give it to him. He take it on from there, it's cheaper, his cash value is very nice, I all agree with that, it's a nice number. But I've got priorities right now, and that is not a priority. My priority right now is I must protect myself first, because why? I'm the goose that lay the golden egg. Okay, my wife is the one that lays, but I'm the one that provides, you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm the one that provides the income, so I must protect who first? Me! That's first priority. I must protect my disability, my death, my medical, protect my wife's medical, protect my children's medical. That's the priority. I must save for my children's education first. That's the priority. Education comes before retirement because I can retire later. My kids cannot study later, right? I cannot tell my son, I'm sorry, you ready? But Papa, not ready. So you wait three more years, okay? I can't. So I've got to plan for retirement first, right? After I plan retirement, whatever money I have, I save for my retirement. I have been in practice for 15 years. I have not seen any people after planning all these things. Still got a lot of money left, you know. If you have, you are the type huh, that last month's salary haven't finished, this month come ready. Most of us don't have. So let's be very clear. When you buy insurance, please ask yourself three questions. How long do you need? How much do you need? Then you go down to what type to buy. And please look at it holistically from a financial planning perspective because there are many other needs in your life. If you just tackle insurance alone and you want to buy the best of everything, I'm sorry, but I have to be very crude to say we are really planning to die because if you are not dying, then your plan will mess it up. With that, I